Yeah, hi, good morning, everybody. This morning I woke up to a LinkedIn article by a gentleman named Peter Diamandis. And for those of you who Peter Diamandis, or don't know who Peter Diamandis is, he's a very successful entrepreneur. He's a Greek American. He was born in 1961, so I think that makes him about 55 years old. Someone check my math on that. And he um, has founded the X Prize Foundation. He's founded Singularity University. Uh, he's ri written a best selling book called Abundance, uh, another one called Bold. They both have really long subtitles. I don't remember what they're about. One is Bold is about making a difference, being creative, um, having an impact in the world, and Abundance is about wealth generation. And um, <clears throat> it's funny, I've never met Mr. Diamandis, but I was an applicant to his Singularity uh, University, which is, um, gosh, a while ago. It's sort of it was like a combination of like tech, business, innovation, startup, uh, philosophy, um, uh, thought, leadership, generation type stuff. Uh, and I was accepted, but I couldn't raise the money to go. It was a $25,000 cost. I was admitted on all my academic merits, but you have to pay for it yourself. And I tried to get the money together. I couldn't. So I ended up not going. Um, but interestingly enough, Mr. Diamandis' um, article on LinkedIn today, which pardon me while I recheck the title over here, uh, is called The Next Sexual Revolution. And um, I promise this is not about to get weird, this, <laughs> this video. But what stuck out to me about it <clears throat> is um, he talks about how 40 million Americans right now are using internet dating sites. And he talks about how that's become <clears throat> a $2.4 billion industry. And let's go over some of the stats that Mr. Uh, Diamandis here talks about, if you can see right there on the computer, he talks about how there's all kinds of apps, uh, Tinder, coffee meets, bagels. You can, uh, you can select potential partners based on age, family, and marital status. You got seniors meeting sing seniors, single meeting single, biology. You can find your own gene partner, uh, face-to-face mate. You can look up someone who you want to date based off their facial features. Income brackets, millionaires meeting millionaires. And then, of course, oh, there goes the screensaver. Sorry about that. Of course, religion, uh, J-date, J-wed, Christian mingle, that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> why am I bringing this up today? Here's why. As we said, this, these videos that we make, Nas and I, are geared mainly towards uh, high school age, college age, uh, and of course, professionals are always welcome to draw sources of inspiration from what we talk about, but I have to make a comment on some of this stuff as like a guy who's married um, very happily uh, and been with his partner for 10 years. We've been married for four, together for 10, uh, and we didn't meet on one of these sites. And now look, in this day and age, everyone's always about, oh, if you speak out against this, then you're alienating these people. No, I'm not. I'm not. I think that's bunk. It's a bogus attitude. Because one disagrees with an idea does not mean one is out of hand coming down on or alienating a whole group of people. It's an absurd thought. And I have to get that out of the way because I am going to say something. Uh, about these sites that I would like to um, see if it uh, instills some thought and stimulates the thinking process in some of the younger viewers here. These sites didn't exist for a really, really long time. To a guy like me who didn't meet his spouse on these sites, I know these are absurdly popular, but for a guy who didn't meet his spouse on a site like this, who met her through the whatever you want to call it, old-fashioned, traditional, conventional means of just being in a cafe at the same time and having a mutual friend and getting introduced and talking and enjoying one another's company and getting to know each other one step at a time, face-to-face, -face, and building in that, you know, what I would call a more organic way. <clears throat> this seems kind of mechanistic to me. Uh, another adjective I'd throw out of these websites are kind of contrived, meaning they, they create circumstances that aren't completely natural. You need a machine to, um, to intermediate between the two people. And this is why this is a sensitive topic, is because you can read into what I'm saying. Well, Justin, you're, what are you saying? That people who use these sites are, you know, relationship retrogrades, and they're idiots, and they don't know, and you know, and you're superior? No, I'm not saying that at all. 
I don't know any of the people who use these things. I don't know. I know like two people actually. That's that's. I was about to say a lie. I know two people who have used these sites and it worked out fine. What I'm asking you to do as my audience, and this is more of like a thought exercise for you, consider an alternative opinion. It's very easy these days to see a technological innovation, to see a technological uh, advancement, quote unquote, and latch onto it like it is the next greatest thing that's going to save humanity. My friends, I tell you what, that is dangerous thinking. <clears throat> it's dangerous thinking, not to say because... These, these tech innovations can't help. Of course they do. You know, I'm, I'm not, what do the, they call a Luddite? You know, I'm not a Luddite. I'm using a cell phone camera. I'm on YouTube. Uh, I went to Jiffy Lube the other day, and Jiffy Lube checked all of my uh, oil and uh, tar car tire pressure and all this stuff with fancy computers. Nothing against this kind of stuff. What I am talking about, and this is what's geared to, geared to young people, is before you become willing to give over your own internal organic human being radar for relationships, whatever your orientation is, it doesn't matter. Whatever you choose to be, whoever you choose to be in the world of relationships, in the world of dating, <clears throat> what I'm saying is give yourself a moment of pause. Say, okay, these services are here. They have positive points, but let me try to do this on my own. Let me try to do this on my own. And here's why I offer that. Because you're talking to a guy who did. And I know all of our experiences aren't 100% universal. But I, I can tell you it's, it's very satisfying. And it, it has made for a very romantic and fun journey. <clears throat> excuse me. For my wife and I. I'm sorry. The screensaver keeps coming on. i got to adjust that. <laughs> um, for my wife and I uh, to have just met each other naturally. And... and the one that always gets me, okay, and I, I will admit a total bias on this one. You guys can call me a jerk in the comments, tell me I'm evil, whatever, that's fine. The, um, the, it, when you have a child someday, you know, hey mom, hey dad, or, hey, hey dad, how did you and mom meet, says the kid. Oh, you know, we, we met on, um, you know, gene partner DNA. What's, what's gene partner DNA? Well, we wanted to get together with the people with the right genes. And it just, to me, my opinion, that is not a very romantic story. That's just my opinion. You know, other people could look at this and say, yeah, you know, it's an unsafe world. I want to give my child the maximum opportunity for success to be healthy. So we matched up the genes or I'm a millionaire. So I don't want to risk my money by dating someone who's just a money grubbing jerk and is going to steal from me or I'm Jewish. Got to be with Jewish. I'm Christian. Got to be with Christian. I get it. I, I do. I, I do. I like I, you can tell by the tone of my voice. I'm not coming down on this. I'm offering an alternative point of view, which is kind of ironic because my alternative point of view was, up until recently, the prevailing point of view. Think about that for a second. When the traditional becomes the alternative. Da -da 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 -da. Anyway, <clears throat> this is all just food for thought. Now, interestingly enough, I'll loop this back around to Peter Diamandis. In Singularity University, in the year in which I applied, which I believe was 2010, they had several tracks that you applied for, meaning you applied to be a robotics person or you applied to be a like gene splicing person. There was a lot of hard science stuff that a guy like me, humanities major, I was like, ooh, ooh, I had no idea about any of it. None. <laughs> just, like just as much as those robot techs know about my field, you know, medieval Spanish literature, uh, they, they don't, they don't, I don't know about, I don't know about their field. So I applied for <clears throat> what was called the philosophy of technology uh, track, which was to Diamandis' organization then, and he worked with a gentleman named Ross Schott, S-H-O-T-T, -T, interesting guy, shaved head, funky sunglasses, I emailed with him a few times, seemed really cool. Uh, Ross, if you see this piece, man, it was good to know you back in the day. Um, he, um, he ran that division, if I'm remembering this right, this was like seven years, six years ago. And the, the philosophy and technology slot track was for people like me who are of a younger-ish generation, you know, I'm still in my 30s, who enjoy aspects of technology, but who say, whoa, we need to start thinking more slowly about the application because what are the, what are the moral implications for humanity? What are the spiritual implications? What are the, in a rational way, not just like in a way people screaming on the internet, like, um, you know, you looked at a porn site and Jesus is right behind you and he's going to get you. 
Like, no, that's, no, there's, there's no need for that. Like, you can build all those things in, the religious perspectives, the, but in a calm and logical way. And sort of the Singularity University program, of which Diamandis is the founder, the guy who wrote the article I referenced, the guy who created the graphic I just showed you, um, he <clears throat> wanted to build this up. And I always thought that was great, that what a uh, non-hypocritical guy, what an intellectually honest person. On the one hand, he's got all his tech people, and he's willing to line up the opposing uh, point of view. He's willing to line up the philosophers of a new generation who could come in and say, hey, you know what? Guys, it's great on the surface, but let's just look at it a little more. Let's, let's balance off what you're designing v based off some of the great spiritual ideas of texts of days of old or religious texts, philosophical texts, and how do we stitch it all together and make it maximally effective for people, not only on a tech concrete level, but on an internal spiritual level. What's wrong with that? Diamandis said, nothing. Nothing's wrong with that. He had a whole track for it. And that's what I got accepted to, to, to cultivate my attitudes and opinions some more and, and delve more into that, couldn't raise the 25 grand. Back then I was kind of like, aww, because I was really, really excited. I would have loved to go and meet all those talented people that he had um, uh, put together. But at the same time, <clears throat> um, and this is not a disparagement, Mr. Diamandis, his program is not an official university degree. It's called Singularity University. It's like a certificate program. So, you know, there are pluses and minuses of, of that kind of thing. Um, it would have been, in my opinion, sort of like a great networking opportunity with really effective, highly effective uh, professional people. But it didn't come true, and that's okay. Um, so yeah, but just today I wanted to bring this up because I haven't seen Diamandis' name in like seven years, and then bloop, on my LinkedIn is his article. And it's interesting that he's uh, approaching this topic, the topic of uh, sexuality and relationships. And so I wanted to throw in my own two cents, you know, being a married guy, um, being with one partner faithfully for 10 years, I had to throw that out there because we're addressing kids and uh, we're addressing student age people and maybe young professionals. And it's something that you guys uh, ought to be thinking about because this is your world now. When I was in my teens, none of this existed. J-Date and Christian Mingle and Gene Partners. I hadn't heard of that one until today. Gene Partners? I was like, okay. It didn't surprise me. It made sense that that's what people um, are looking for. You know, I've seen that in science fiction movies. Didn't know that that was going to be a thing. But um, yeah, just um, the message of this video is uh, trust yourself, basically. That's the message. You know, if you want to use the machine, use the machine. That's It's there. It's not going, God, sorry, <laughs> it's there, it's not going anywhere. My screensaver is going to be going somewhere in a minute, I'm going to throw this thing out the window, but um, it's, not, it's not going anywhere. And um, you need to trust your instincts. And I'm sure this is one of those conversations where half of you were saying like, uh-huh, we, we already know this, we already, yeah, yeah, thank you, Th thank you, thank you, that's enough. But I just had to get it out there, I just wanted to put it out there, have this talk on our channel. So please uh, chime in with your comments. I'd love to hear what you think. Please clue in uh, an old man on how uh, dating and relationship is working in the, in the teen and 20 year old segment of the population these days. What challenges do you guys face? What's easy? What's fun? What's interesting? What's spooky? What's not? Just chime in on the, um, on the uh, what do you call it, comments. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so very much for joining Nas and I once again on uh, 21st Century Life. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.